the truth is out there. It is one of the world's greatest mysteries, Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. So does the lake creature actually exist? Well, if you ask one man, he'll tell you it is in fact no myth. Every day it's flaunted in front of your face. Hundreds of people in the valley say they are hearing voices in their heads. You just choose to ignore it. Belief can be a powerful force. No one knows that better than the people who are sure they've seen Bigfoot. Real accounts. He says he knows who's playing mind games. Rogue government officials that are uh, sponsoring this. Um, also corrupt business officials and um, private citizens. From real people. Hundreds of people turned out tonight for the unveiling of a very controversial statue. Yeah, it really is. The Satanic Temple of Detroit revealed the one-ton bronze statue. It's time for you to take a swim. I'm just excited to see my Lord and Savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. In the dark waters. The Dark Waters channel is for entertainment purposes only. Although information in these stories can be traced back to relevant and true sources, Dark Waters strongly discourages its viewers, listeners, and subscribers from visiting the site of incidents and encounters discussed or revealed on the show. In other words, we will not be held responsible if you are attacked by a dogman, molested by a Bigfoot, bitten by vampires, chased by chupacabras, abducted by aliens, accosted by the men in black, investigated or arrested by the local law enforcement, CIA, FBI, NSA, EPA, BLM, or another alphabet group, whether on U.S. soil or abroad. Thank you for tuning in, and enjoy the show. <laughs> Six months ago, we moved into a new house. We had outgrown our old place, and this new house was perfect. Now, in hindsight, I should have known something was off. The rent was low, the neighborhood was perfect, and it just was too picturesque. But we were in need of a blessing at this time. And so in my mind, in my family's mind, this house was a blessing to us. The day we were moving our stuff in, the guy next door came over for a chat. And doing small talk, he kind of slid in the fact that no one had been able to stay in the house for more than a year. Also, that everyone who had once lived in the house left in the middle of the night. Now, before your mind begins to wonder, yes, absolutely, I found this information to be disturbing. But like I said, this house was a dream for us. I wasn't going to let the creepy neighbor scare me away. Things went well for us for about the first six months. The wife and kids were happy, and so was I. And as a hobby, I played in a beer pong league. I've been doing this for about 10, 15 years, along with my best friend, Ron. Well, suddenly, Ron fell on some hard times. Problems on the job, problems at home with his wife, and he found himself in trouble. So my wife and I opened up our home to him, for a small fee, of course. Dark Waters, remember I was telling you about some of the strange occurrences in my house? After Ryan moved in, all the strange shit started happening. Now, it would take a while before I experienced anything myself. But when I did, it was small stuff, like footsteps in the hallways, doors opening and closing on their own. However, Ron? Ron? Man, he was having issues. And it seemed like all the activity was focused on him. One morning, when my wife and I went downstairs for breakfast, we found him in the corner of the living room. Knees hugged to his chest, his eyes wide open and his blank stare and shaking. It took nearly two hours to get him to talk. And when he did, what he said was enough to get my wife and I to start praying again. You see, Ron had been lying on the sofa watching TV. And as he began to doze off, for some reason, something made him open his eyes. And when he did, there was this figure standing over him. It was jet black and his head reached the ceiling of the room and the eyes they were this fiery red color 
this shadow creature was solid black and it was looking away from him Ron told me that initially he thought he was dreaming so he began to wipe his eyes and as he removed his fingers from his eyes that's when it looked down at him and he heard it say what do you know about death now of course I thought my guy Ron was tripping but he insisted that this sound was not in his head and that this thing stood there looking down at him. Ryan closed his eyes again, praying that it was nothing more than a dream. And then when he opened them, it was bent over, face to face with him. That's when he rolled over on his stomach, pushed his face into the sofa and began to pray. A few minutes later, he rolled back over. There was nothing there. But he could feel this presence in the room. So he moved to the corner, put his back against the wall. And that's how my wife and I found him the next morning. Knees to his chest eyes wide open with the sickest look of fright and fear in his eyes that I'd ever seen. After that night, my wife and I helped Ryan get an apartment and moved him out of our house. And since he's been gone, the activity has stopped. In 2003, I found myself working for the city jail and living in a very remote area. This particular night, I was driving home after working a very long double shift and getting off at midnight. It's about halfway home. I remember this strange feeling coming across me. Sure, it was foggy that night. And I'm sure the fog added on to the overall foreboding feeling that I had, but something still felt weird. As I'm driving along, I come across these three figures. You know? People, I'm thinking. At least they looked like people. And they were wearing these old time robes. But they were just standing there. Literally standing in the middle of the roadway. To where they blocked both lanes. So I stopped the car. Turned on my bright lights. And looked at them. That's when one of them slowly raised his arm. Pointing at me. And I realized. That their eyes were this glowing red color. I was overcome with this feeling. And even to this day. I find hard to describe. But the best way to put it, I felt like my life was in danger. Now keep in mind, I work at a prison, so I was armed. But I figured it was better to back up and take the long way home. When I arrived at my house, it was about 1.45 a.m. But I still had that weird feeling. By 2 o'clock, I was in bed. But I couldn't shake this feeling. Almost as if I hadn't turned around, that I would have died. The whole energy of that night was weird. My cats were doing strange things, and there was so much fog around my house at that time. When I woke in the morning, the feeling was gone. I traveled that road every night after work and haven't seen those three hooded figures since. I pray to God that I don't see them again. Six years ago, I had the most unusual experience. My husband and I were living in an apartment at the time. I was sleeping in the bedroom. He was out on the sofa in the living room. Sometime during that night, I was awakened by a very loud knock at the front door. When I realized it was 2 a.m., I got up and I was pissed. I figured it was one of his drunken friends coming over to mess around. Seconds later, I heard my husband get up and answer the door. But as he did, something very weird occurred. It felt like I was in a waking dream, like I was losing consciousness and unaware of my surroundings. It's difficult to describe, other than I felt like I was in a bubble, still able to move, but just slowly. When I walked out of the bedroom, I couldn't find my husband anywhere. But there were two other people standing in my living room by the sliding glass door. One was very tall and lanky. He was wearing a dog hooded cape. The other was short, like the size of a five year old, dressed in a black one piece suit that covered his head. It was unmistakable that the smaller one was the person in charge. But I was afraid. And on an even deeper level, I felt alone. 
because I couldn't find my husband anywhere. Conflicted, I stood still, staring at the two of them and trying to get a better look at their faces. The short one turned away and never showed his face, but the taller one raised his head and stared right back at me. It looked like a young man, this pale white skin, but his eyes, his eyes were the solid black. I can still remember his face was human-like, but something wasn't right. After seeing them, the next thing I remember is waking up in the morning, walking out into our kitchen and asking my husband if anyone knocked at the door last night. He said, yeah, somebody knocked, but when I opened the door, no one was there. He even looked outside and into the parking lot. Couldn't figure out how someone had knocked on our door and gotten away so quickly without being seen. He said he had a sick feeling after he opened the door. At that moment, I didn't tell him what happened to me, though we've discussed it since. About two months later, I discovered that I was pregnant, but that was supposed to be impossible because I was told before I got married by the doctor that I could not conceive a child. Even a doctor looked at my tests and my scans from my previous examination and determined that my eggs were not viable. And even with that information, he confirmed that I was pregnant. Now calculating the time of when I conceived fell within the period in which we had our encounter with those two strange men. I relaxed. The pregnancy went well. And I gave birth to a healthy baby girl. I still have to wonder if my encounter had anything to do with me being able to conceive my baby. Or am I just being paranoid? 